You've all seen Markdown across GitHub and other static site generators and so many other platforms and tools. But have you seen the latest features? It came out about a year ago on GitHub, but it's not talked about so much. So I really want to talk about it again. Look at this diagram behind me. Diagrams are so important, such a great way to convey your message. There are different types of diagrams. I'm going to show you loads more, but here's one of my favorites, a workflow diagram. But if you draw this in a tool like Illustrator or Vector or any other of those tools, that's great, but you can't, don't want to commit it to the repo and it's really difficult for someone to edit it, especially if they don't have the app. And even if they did have the app and did have the file and made the changes and you're changing the produced binary every time in your project. And then when someone creates a pull request, you know that the whole binary changed, but what changed in it, ugh, all awful stuff. What happens if I told you this image behind me was written in Markdown? Yes, Markdown. We know we all love Markdown. What else can we do? Well, let me show you another one below. Look at this. This is a Git tree. You probably recognize it. This was done in Markdown as well. And it's a very simple example. You can make these so much more complicated, but I'm going to show you what is possible and how you can do it. This is an issue on GitHub and it's got these images, but these images, like I said, are actual code blocks um, in Markdown. So what we need to do here, like you normally would, you would with a code block, you would put here something like TypeScript or, or JSON, for example, um, and then you'd create an object and we could say something like name, oh, it's JSON, not JavaScript. So we'd say name, and then we could say Eddie, and then that would be the JavaScript object. We can close it. We'll get syntax highlighting and all that great stuff from it. And also the copy and paste button, which is a pretty recent feature too, which is very cool. But these diagrams, it's a mermaid is an open source library that I use with our documentation, like with ASCII Doctor to generate a PDF or a website and it generates these images. But it's really awesome that GitHub now supports this. So we still do the triple back ticks, like a code block. And instead of putting, you know, TypeScript or JSON, we put mermaid. And then we put the type of diagram that we want. So in this case, it was a sequence diagram. I think I called it a workflow diagram earlier. I mean, sequence. And then you can write what you need to write. So, you know, you can see what it looks like here. You can see that Alice, then Bob, then John, then Charlie and Diana, and then you've got a par block, and then you've got the, the workflows. It's not too difficult to understand. You probably don't even need the, the kind of par block, but when you have multiples of those, it does look quite nice. But you can see Alice joins to Bob with a title, go help John. So you can see that's pretty straightforward. It's got that, that arrow, which I think is really awesome. And then you can keep doing arrows with a title lots of great stuff. And the one underneath with the Git graph, I think is pretty, pretty cool because you've got commit, commit, and then you can specify which branch. And again, I'm not here to teach you how to do these different diagrams. I just want to show you what is possible. So if I want to show you what's even more possible, let's head over to um, the different types of graphs. So this is the mermaid website and you've got the different diagrams down the side here. So let's start off with a few of these. And I'm going to show you one extra feature at the end. So stay tuned. I've got some exciting stuff to show. So this is what the flow diagram looks like. They, in their documentation, they show you how to create the, the blocks or if you want rounded corners or a circle. And these do mean different things, but it's uh, like a decision block and all that sort of stuff. So you've got all those tools that you need. Let's move on from flow chart to sequence, which I was just showing you. You can start off simple. Again, look at the really simple ones. It is sequence diagram. Alice goes to John with the title and you can activate the, the one you want to go to next. And the reason for activate is you get these kind of blocks to show you the progress. I'm explaining this really badly. I'm no expert in these diagrams, but I really like it when people use them. So let's move on to the next one before I embarrass myself any further. Let's have a look at class diagrams. So you've got class diagrams and you've probably seen these with your ORM um, or when you're doing a database class, all those sorts of things. But it's great that you've got these of really good documentation on, on how to do them with some really good examples. I'm going quite fast through this because there's a few more I want to get through and I want to keep this video quite short so you can go and explore and play with this. Do let me know in the comments below what diagrams you enjoy and what you play with and while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So this is state diagrams and again, you can see it's not too complicated to get started and it produces a really nice diagram and with CSS, you can customize these with styling as well too. They do have a documentation on this as well. Really simple. Look at this S1 to S2, very similar to the other format and the other um, syntax we saw in the different diagrams. Entity relationship diagrams, again, really, really useful and important. I think it's so good to try and get our code into documentation, but in documentation, 
also into diagrams. I can go to some of my favorite ones now. Oh, user journey. This is a new one since I've last been to this website. They keep adding more and more diagrams all the time. When I used to use this right at the beginning, they probably only had two or three different diagrams. And now you can see they probably have a good 10 different diagrams. But this looks really, really good. So this is obviously quite new because they haven't got a lot of documentation on it. This is where you can contribute and improve too. But I do really like this. Okay, Gantt chart is pretty nice. Uh, project managers and the people who aren't doing the day to day really love these sorts of graphs. They can actually see what the plan is and how long something's taking. And don't forget they have a live editor where you can actually test these diagrams in a live editor. So you write it on the left and it appears on the right and you can get a markdown link if you want to uh, use it. But now you don't need to before we had to do this, it would render somewhere else, return an image to, to GitHub. Now we can do it directly on GitHub and the benefits are massive as I mentioned before, but I'm gonna show you some diffs and all that cool stuff coming up in a moment. Pie chart, again, this is this is a quite a new one as well, but you could highlight some, some data on your repo or if you're trying to highlight an issue or this browser is used more than this, so we need to prioritize some of these bugs, um, I think is really, really important. Git graph, I do like this one. And you can see it does get, you know, you can make it as fancy as you want and you can see the, the colors change and it looks pretty cool. I do like this one, how you got the branches down the left and then you can see the path. This would be really good in a video on me explaining how to do forks and branches in Git. I really like that actually. Okay, C4 diagrams. I don't know what this is. This looks quite intense, but I'm guessing it does draw something pretty intense. So you can, you know, get quite advanced with this, but I recommend keeping it simple. Therefore, other people can, can maintain it as well and add improvements to it too. I mean, you can see the colors change, lots you can do. You got tutorials, API usage, even theming, as I mentioned before. Other examples, I wonder what's in here. In other examples, it does seem like they have an overview of all the different examples they've got from the different sections to show you what is possible. And I think that's important because these types of diagrams are super useful. And so, as I mentioned, it's so important to do this as kind of code because, or code, markdown, markup, whatever you want to call it, because when someone makes a change, you can really see the difference. I'm not going to create a pull request to show you that way, but I'm going to create a diff to show you how a pull request would show it. So I'm going to change this to a diff. And if you haven't seen this before, this is pretty cool. But when a pull request comes in, it effectively gives you a diff. Say, for example, I change this to something like, go help Bob then um, the way the diff would work in a pull request is it would put a minus on that side and put a plus on this side. So when you're reviewing the pull request, you can straight away see that this got changed to this line. Actually, in the pull request diff, it goes even one further and actually shows you the, the characters that got changed. So it would highlight that even further. But the point I'm trying to make is that to review these, you'd see the result because um, then you can right click and go view file, but also you can actually see what character, what line was changed. So it's so much easier to review. But I hope you found that interesting and let me know what you think of these diagrams and if you're using them already or you're going to use them going forward. We need some of these in the Eddie Hub uh, community. So if you do want to get involved in some diagrams, come over to Eddie Hub community and let's collaborate and geek out and make some diagrams for the Eddie Hub community documentation. I think it would be super awesome and it would help other people that were trying to get into open source and in, on board into the Eddie Hub community. If you want to geek out with me more, don't forget to join our Discord with a link in the description below. I'll see you there.